Who's ready to see how much carnage is in this engine? Oh. Hey guys, I'm Chris and this is Restoration Rescue and welcome back to the garage. So today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the 454. But last week we knocked out the C10 and we threw some primer down on the floorboards. So that is ready for some paint. Once I do a little bit more primering up the cab and get that thing ready for the interior color. But what we're gonna be doing today is working on the 454. If you guys don't remember from two videos ago, uh, we had to end the video on a very somber note. We didn't catch it on video, but I did blow up this engine. So as I was driving up a road, I was traveling about 55, 60 miles an hour and I lost oil pressure and developed a knock. Limped it on home and here we sit. So now what we need to do is we're gonna start removing some of these brand new plugs we just put in and start looking down these bore scopes to see how bad the internal damage is, at least up top and what we can see through this bore scope. Then we're gonna start ripping this engine out and hopefully getting the ability to rebuild this thing after it gets back from the machine shop. We're also gonna yoke out this transmission as it was slipping and we're gonna rebuild that as well and get this thing hopefully up and running pretty quickly and a lot more quickly than the C10. So first things first, let's remove some spark plugs. So the first thing we have is our first spark plug out of number one. Doesn't look too bad. It is a little wet, but nothing too crazy, especially if we lost oil pressure. So the gap is still pretty good. If you can focus in on it, it is really good. And it doesn't look like it blew up, nor does it look cracked in any way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go grab the bore scope and we're gonna go shove it down the first borehole. So here is my Autel scanner and it comes with a bore scope. Don't mind my 51 updates, that's because I haven't renewed my subscription because the newest car that I have is a 2016 at this point and I've only scanned up to 2021 when I bought this instrument. So what I need to do right now is I'm gonna pull out the bore scope, switch over to the camera and we're gonna look in cylinder one. So as we look in cylinder one, we see that it is low and doesn't look too bad. We have some really nice cross hatching still on it. We do have some pretty good carbon buildup on the top of the piston, but not anything that I'm too worried about. This side looks pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch from number one over to number three and take a look at that. So after looking at number one and seeing how good that one looked, let's look at number two. I have the plug removed and we are in. So the cross hatching on this one looks the same. Again, the piston is low, um, which that could just be firing order, but it doesn't look bad in here as well. We have some nice cross hatching and we still have a piston and the piston looks pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually switch over to the other bank and look at number two because our sound looks like it's coming from the front. So let's go ahead and rip that cylinder or rip that plug out and look inside. So on one and three, we have a good cylinder. So let's go in and see if we can find out where number one lies and see the damage here. So let's try and get in here. Find where I need to actually go. There it is. So here we go. This one also has, as you can see right there at the top, a valve open and let's get in here this looks all right as well good cross hatching and the piston looks okay don't have too much carnage and it looks pretty okay 
Let's see if we can spin it around a little bit and find and damage. Well, that one looks pretty good. I don't have any reserve on that one. So let's move down the line and see what we can see in cylinder number four. So now we are going to look down for number four. So as we try and look in here, this one might be near the top. I'd be kind of shocked if none of them are. Yeah, so this one's right at the top of the cylinder. Can't really see anything other than it's got some carbon buildup, but at least we still have a piston. So that looks okay. It doesn't look like there's any damage to it. You can see a valve and the valve is closed for the most part, but it does look pretty good. Let's see if we can see anything else. Not really, we're just looking at a hole. But other than that, this one looks pretty good. So we're gonna switch back over the other side where it's a little bit easier to get into and see what we see in cylinder number seven. All right, so I made a little bit of a mistake when I was speaking. This is actually going to be cylinder number five. If I can get in here again, this one is near the top. We have a valve that's kind of open, which is a little scary, but doesn't look like any contact on it, which is a good sign. The cylinder walls still look pretty good. It does have a lot of carbon buildup, but otherwise we have a cylinder, which makes my feeling about the knock a little less scary until we hit the last three cylinders. So let's go ahead and now look at number seven. All right, so this is cylinder number seven. As you can see, it is a little crusty, at least on the outside. It is difficult to see when we were putting all the plugs in to actually see this damage, not even damage, but just this dirt and grime. But let's go ahead and look in and make sure we still have a cylinder in this bore. If I can figure out. It is a little bit difficult. So let's get. There we go. So we have a cylinder. And this one is near the top as well. A lot of carbon buildup, but nothing too major. And of course, we're still happy we have a cylinder. So now let's hop over to the other side, check out the last two, and make sure that we have everything we need as well as cylinders. All right, so here we go on cylinder number six. Let's take a look. You can see right up there, we have a valve wide open, and we have a nice bore. We also have a cylinder, if I can flip around in here that has at least cutouts for those. Doesn't look like any damage on the top of these pistons. So we're down to one piston left. Hopefully this thing is still here. So let's go ahead and pop out this last plug and look inside. All right, so now we are going to look in the final bore and see if we have a piston, which I really hope we do because I don't feel like having to get new pistons and everything for this, although we probably will if I can find my little hole. All right, so here we are at the last piston hole. So at the spark plug hole, here we go. And I have a good feeling. I think I see what I want. And we do have a piston. It is pretty high up, but we have a piston. The wall looks pretty good right there. And I can't get too much lower, but we have some carbon buildup, but we have a piston. So that's pretty good. We have pistons in every bore. 
So it's not really an upper block piston issue and it could be just something below, could be the crank or it could be top end. So what we need to do now is start ripping this engine out of the vehicle so we can tear it down to see where this knocking is coming from. So that is some amazing news. All of our cylinders are still intact and in their bores. We didn't skyrocket any of them to the moon, which is a good sign, so we have pistons. Now the problem is, is finding out what is the issue. I don't like that a couple pistons are low right next to each other and then high on the other end. That just might be firing order and I'm overthinking it. But what we need to do now is we're gonna start removing this hood and start trying to rip this engine out and get it on the stand so I can start tearing it down so I can see any damage that we do have. So let's go ahead, take off this hood and get to ripping this engine out. So it may not seem like we've done a whole lot. We got some headlights out. We got the upper shroud out, air cleaner, battery, and hood off. But it doesn't look like a lot, but it has been a lot of time. So we are going to continue. And what we're going to do is the plan is to take the whole front clip off of this truck to make it a lot easier to yoke the transmission and the engine out at the same time. Transmission is going to get rebuilt and it's going to get torn down. And also this engine, obviously, because we have a knock and we still have to investigate where that is. So we're gonna continue trying to take this front grill off, the bumper and the lower fascia so that we can get down to brass tacks and get this thing off. So let's go ahead and start ripping off some more bolts.
So it is time for us to start removing the cooling system so we can get this project farther along so I can start getting this engine out of this car. So I don't have any really big bottles right now that are free. So good old fashioned water bottle with the top cut off. We got this thing loose. We're gonna throw it under here and hopefully we don't get that much out of this. And hopefully we catch it all. All right, we did not catch it all, but we got a good majority of it. Looks pretty good. I don't think that's rust or anything in it. I think that's just a little old dirt. But we're gonna continue ripping this out and taking out all of the fluid so that we can continue. Okay, so instead of removing the fenders, I think what we're gonna do is we're only gonna remove the front fascia and be able to pull the engine out and leave the um, fenders on and just kind of push things to the side. Like my AC, I really don't wanna lose the Freon. I don't have anything to take the Freon out. I don't know anybody who has that locally to me, so I gotta move that to the side. Then also with our power steering pump, I have a condenser on the front down here, right here that I'm just gonna try and slide through and just make this a little bit easier on myself. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to take tension out of this belt and remove the belt so I can start removing the AC and I can remove the power steering pump so that I can move it to the side and probably remove the little condenser that's right here on the fascia. Then what I can do is start tearing down and possibly getting ready to pull this motor after I start disconnecting a bunch of wiring. So let's go ahead, get this belt off and get to moving. So now what we're going to do is we have most of everything removed. We have one bolt left on the front, holding it on pretty much, minus some um, hoses. So what we need to do now for our hoses is we need to start removing some of the AC lines and then also the power steering. Um, unfortunately, by looking at it, it doesn't look like I can remove the power steering and AC and just hold it off to the side. Um, I have to disconnect it, which means I'm going to lose some Freon, um, which is a little dangerous for the outside world, but nothing too major as it's already out here. Um, also, the other side, we just have a power steering line that we're going to have to disconnect. Nothing too crazy. That one I might be able to just shove to the side when I pull my engine out. But the problem is I do have to remove this line from the um, truck. Um, I'm gonna see if maybe I can just remove it right here uh, as the two lines come in there. But either way, I'm going to have to remove a line up front with a fitting because it all connects right here and, let, and 
if I want to remove this. So let's go ahead. We're going to throw a, a nut or a, a bolt or a, a socket on here so I could speak. And we're going to get this off of here and see what we need to do elsewise to get this thing off. transmission rather than trying to fight up and over with just the motor. We have to rebuild this transmission at some point so it just makes this job a whole lot easier and we can see some of the damage and the damage is the wiring harness. So there's no chewed wires. It's just as you could come and see this right here. I can't even pick it up really is the um, insulation let me bring it over to you guys and let you see it and it just look at this it's just crumbling in my hand it is just not very good anymore i mean it is 30 plus years old some spots it's good other plot spots it's horrible We've got a lot of it laying in here as you can see and it just crumbles away to dirt so what we need to do now is we need to start removing some of this wiring harness we need to remove some accelerator cables so that we can get this thing ready to get pulled.
So you can see that our electrical wiring is pretty much all out of the way over here and here so that this thing is ready to get one step closer to getting pulled out. We pulled our throttle cable. We also pulled the carburetor. The carburetor took a little bit more than I thought it would, but pretty much what now I have up front really just looks like some wires that we have to get around. We have to move our AC lines, which shouldn't be too tough. That's just kind of pushing them out of the way because I really don't want to disconnect them from the body. So what we need to do now is get underneath the truck and we are going to start taking apart the exhaust, the transmission mounts, and getting the drive shaft out of this truck. So we do have to open the door and get this thing all on jack stands. So let's go ahead and get this thing in the air and get that drive shaft out. Okay, so we have what we need to do under the truck completed, at least I think. We had a couple wiring harnesses that we had to disconnect and a wire or a steering shaft that goes to the transmission to shift that I had to disconnect. Otherwise, that's good to go and we took care of the exhaust and the drive shaft. So now what we have to do is we have engine mounts. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that is all I have left. I can yoke this thing out. So what I'm gonna do, as you see, is I already have the hoist in place. It's already got some good tension on it. And the engine is also being supported by the truck as well as the engine hoist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off these engine mounts and hopefully I can start slipping this engine right out from the front. So that last engine bolt took probably about an hour and a half of me underneath up, underneath up, underneath up, trying to get it to sit and get to both sides moving. It is a little bit of a pain in the butt because of where the starter is. Probably better if I took the starter out. But what we need to do now is just start lifting this engine up and seeing if it's gonna come out. So let's see what we can do. So we are separated. Now what we need to do is we got it off jack stands. We just need to roll this thing out and then we have all this room for this engine and transmission. So just gonna uh, go in, clean up, probably change because I am just covered and covered in dirt and grime. I don't know if you guys can see it. I even have transmission fluid all through my hair. So we're gonna roll this thing out and then we're gonna start taking the transmission off Getting this thing on the engine stand so we can start tearing it down. So 
So now that these two things are completely separated, the truck is somewhat outside. We are going to start taking this transmission off and I'm going to put it on my crawler. So <laughs> let's start by taking off some of these bolts and lowering the transmission so that it has a place to rest while we tear down this end. So as you can see, the engine is on the stand. However, our stand is not really that strong right now and it keeps bending forward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start taking apart some of the engine so this thing lightens up so I can just put it on the stand. It is a very, very heavy block, but this thing is rated for allegedly half ton. Those bolts do scare me a little bit on the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start taking apart the heads and the top end and get rid of the front end of this engine so this thing can be a little lighter. To a lot of problems on the passenger side with the exhaust manifold so we are going to skip ahead and worry about that in a little bit right now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the valve cover on the driver's side of the truck and we're going to remove it uh, so we can take some of this weight out so hopefully that this uh, engine stand will be able to hold this engine because this one is really heavy so let's come over here and take these off. So at least the up top right here looks okay. Don't see anything glaring, anything that's worrisome right out the gate. So I'm not as worried. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and get the other exhaust manifold off and the other valve cover and start looking at this engine because once we start getting a lot of this stuff off, 
we can dive down deep into the engine block. All right, so as you can see, the intake is off and this thing is looking pretty good so far. 
we still need to do a quite a few things like remove our heads and look at our push rods. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen our rocker arms and we're gonna take a look at the push rods. We're gonna get them out, make sure they're flat and make sure that that wasn't our problem. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out some lifters, then we're gonna pull off the crank and get a look at this camshaft to see if maybe that was an issue. And if not, we're gonna keep going and rip off some heads. So the push rods and the lifters looked pretty amazing. No issues there, which is okay. I mean, I want to find the issue and hopefully it's not something major. Um, I'm feeling right now that it might just be a spun bearing. We hope for the best and not a bent rod or a piston rod that is. But now what we need to do is we need to start taking off these heads. So we have the torque sequence. We have to do in the opposite direction to get them off. And then we have to do the same with the other side. The other side is going to be a little bit more of a hassle because we still have our exhaust manifold that won't come off. We also have the dipstick tube that is attached that we're going to have to pretty much rip off. Not a big deal. We'll get that taken care of. So let's start getting this head ripped right off. So we got both heads off now, and now it's time to drop the oil. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit of a pain because the stand is right in the way of where the oil comes out. So it's gonna be a kind of a pain to catch it, but we're gonna give it a shot. Also, uh, another thing is I can't get off the crank uh, pulley on, fr on the front. Well, not really the pulley, just the crank. Um, the one behind the crank pulley, it's, it's been one of those days. Um, I'm gonna probably turn the engine to its side so I can actually drain the oil easily. I've already dropped the filter, so now I just need to drop what's left in the pan and see how bad it is.
filter extension is out and we are ready to pull this thing. So let's hope and pray and hope this isn't too bad. All right, it doesn't look like anything major is wrong. Have some um, shavings in our pump in the screen. I don't see any bent rods, which is some good news. <laughs> I think this thing is okay. So I think our issue was our pump and it starved us a little bit, but not enough to hurt any of the rods. All of my rods look pretty straight. I don't see any issues. I don't see any issues at all with this engine. So I actually have no clue what happened to cause this engine to develop a knock. All right, everyone. So we have made it to the bottom of the engine. So right now, the only thing I see is the oil pump. It's got some shavings in it and pretty big ones right up here in the screen. And sometimes these do get clogged. Shavings could be some metal bearings that are going bad in this engine with 145,000 miles. So we are out of time this week. I'm really happy if you guys stayed this long with us to watch this tear down. And it has been a blast, torture, everything, especially as I don't have AC or really that many power tools in this shop. So next week we're either going to be back here on the 454 tearing this down all the way to the block or we're going to be back over on the 63 either grinding and painting or maybe some more grinding and painting and welding so we'll see you guys next week but make sure you guys smash that like button make sure you guys are commenting on the videos tell us how we're doing and tell us what you're working on and also make sure you're subscribed if you're not please do consider as we're closing in on 2000 and we'd really, really, really love to hit 2,500 by the end of this year. So we'll see you guys next Saturday.